blessed day to everyone there and especially in this time of dispensation of the grace of God. And uh, let's have a look uh, something from the Bible. If you have a Bible there, can you turn uh, uh, Mark chapter 3, verse 28, 29 and 30 about uh, unpardonable sin and uh, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost and so on. That's the matter which has uh, made a lot of talk and, and uh, different kind of doctrines and uh, diff many kind of confusions. But let's have a look some some points about that matter. Okay, Mark chapter three, verse, verse uh, chapter three, verse twenty-eight. <clears throat> Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said he had an unclean spirit. Verses 28 uh, to 30 deal with what is known as the unpardonable sin. Uh, immediately the question that arises or should arise for anyone who takes the Bible seriously is, did Christ die for that sin? Look at verse 29, had never forgiveness. Then Christ didn't die for it, right? Is it so? Aren't you justified from all things by faith in him? Acts chapter 13, verse 30. Well, how could he miss the sin here in verse 29? But look at the rest of the verse. It's in danger of eternal damnation. It's in danger of eternal damnation. Well, if the person who commits this sin is only in danger of going to hell, is there possibly a chance he can get out of it? Do you see the mess you can make of the Bible if you don't rightly divide it? Now there have been some great sermons preached by well-meaning men who believe in the blood atonement of Christ for all sins who believe in salvation by grace through faith without works, and who believe in et eternal security. What they say about the passage to move sinners to accept Christ has nothing whatsoever to do with sound doctrine in the matter. Uh, the standard way to preach it by fundamentals, fundamentalist is to say the sin is rejecting Christ. Of course, that has nothing to do with reality. There are men who got saved after rejecting Christ a hundred times. And uh, some of those men uh, have been a church, have been to church every Sunday morning or whenever of their childhood and uh, two revival meetings a year for decades, for example, and some of them don't get saved until they are into their 70s. So some preachers will make it final rejection of Christ, and of course, that has nothing to do with the passage at all. Faith in the blood atonement is nowhere in the chapter. The charismatic, charismatic don't know that is why they live in mortal terror that they might commit committed it. Someone generalized Christ's words in verses 23 to 27 and said, Well, the sin is attributing the works of the Holy Spirit to Satan. That is a smokescreen to prevent a Bible believer who rightly divide the book from calling attention to their unscriptural nonsense like modern tongues, signs and healings. If you point out the fact that some charismatic healer is a con artist fleecing the flock, you are committing the unpardonable sin. To that we say uh, nonsense. Jesus Christ commended the church at Ephesus for calling the hand of a bunch of liars claiming to have the apostolic signs when they didn't. Revelation chapter 2 verse 2. 
A fine soul winning evangelist named J. Harold Smith had a sermon he preached called God's Three Deadlines. In that sermon, he said the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost was actually cussing out the Holy Ghost. He gave illustration of men he knew who did that and then died within 48 hours. Now that may be wonderful evangelistic preaching, but the old saying is not all good preaching makes good doctrine, and not all good doctrine makes good preaching. Uh, what this brother Smith did was just as bad as what the charismatics do. He interpreted the Bible by his experience and not his experience by the Bible. Uh, you mean to tell that the only way to blaspheme the Holy Spirit is to say something, uh, something uh, cursing Holy Ghost or something blankety blank about bad about Holy Ghost. Something similar like uh, uh, Job's wife said that curse God and die. Curse God and die. So curse Holy Spirit or something like this. Okay, there are examples. Uh, how about claiming to speak ex cathedra like the popes? You mean to tell me usurping the authority of the Holy Ghost is not blasphemy? Why if it were then every Bible reviser like Westcott, Hort, Saft, Driver, Venestle, Alland, Metzger, Tyre, Moffat, Goodspeed, Weigel, Phillips, Berkeley, Taylor, etc. Uh, wouldn't, would be damned, they all played Holy Ghost, so-called, and claim to be able to tell you what God did and didn't say. Along the line of cussing out of the out the Holy Ghost, there was a phenomenon on the internet a few few years ago when teenagers from Christian homes, especially from preachers' homes, were encouraged by infidels, uh, infidels and atheists to curse the Holy Spirit and to film themselves doing it so there would be no doubt that they had done it. Those films were then put on the web as a testimony of those teenagers once and for all rejecting Christ and the Bible. They could never be forgiven all their bridges had been burned, so now they could fornicate, become sex perverts, become so drunks, blow their minds up on drugs, and generally live like hell because there was no turning back. Those poor saps were drop kicked into hell, not by cussing out the Holy Ghost, but by the in inability of preachers and Bible teachers to read more than two verses on a subject. Do you want to know what blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is? I mean, if it's an unpardonable sin, don't you think you had better get it settled once and for all exactly what it is? After all, your eternal destiny could depend on it. Well, let's, uh, let's have a look what you really, uh, your really complicated, crafty, highly intellectual way to find out. Read the next verse that tells you what it is. I mean nothing like the Bible to clear up a theological education. What did they do that put them in danger of eternal, eternal damnation? Because what they did had never forgiveness. Verse 30, because they said, talking about Jesus Christ, had an unclean spirit. Have you ever said that? If you did, what would it mean? Nothing. Notice the statement is in the present tense, when Jesus was here on earth, physically. Well, then it wouldn't mean anything right now. He's not here right now. No man saved or lost knows Christ after the flesh during the church age. Church age. Uh, now it will mean something when he is on the throne at at Jerusalem during the millennium, but no one uh, you know right now will be saying it. They will either be saved and like Christ and won't be saying it. First John chapter 3 verse 2 
or they will be dead and in hell already. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11 and 12, uh, chapter 1 verses 7 to 8. The Holy Ghost has saved many a Jew who at one time thought Jesus Christ had a devil. John chapter 10 verse 20. And uh, compare this uh, Acts chapter 6 verse 7 and chapter 26 verse 9 and 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. Uh, listen people, you have to get things where they belong in that book. In verse 29, Jesus is talking to Jews under the law who are present during his, during his uh, earthly ministry. And uh, we are now living in the dispensation of the grace of God. And the time when Jesus was here, it, it was the gospel of the kingdom. It was a different, uh, so-called different dispensation. Uh, so, he hasn't died for anyone since yet. If any of those Jews who said he had a devil uh, died before Christ's crucifixion, they would have gone to hell. Why? Because there was no blood tournament in the Old Testament for blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. There sure is in the New Testament. And... Uh, This unpardonable sin was connected with saying something about Jesus Christ while he was on earth. It cannot be committed by a Christian because the Son of Man is not on earth. But in person can be given over to a reprobate mind. Romans chapter 1 verse 24 and 28. Let's have a look. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed for ever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto wild affections, for even their woman did change the un, uh, natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they didn't like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And the second thing... Uh, have a look for Second uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen verse five. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen verse five. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen verse five. Uh, examine yourselves, whether be ye in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And he can be in danger of committing the sin unto death. First John chapter 5, verse 16. First John chapter 5, verse 16. First John chapter 5, verse 16. First John chapter five verse sixteen. First John chapter five verse sixteen is here. He said, uh, "If any man see his brother sin, uh, sin which is not only, which is not." Uh, unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I don't say that he shall pray for it. Okay, if you start blaspheming Holy Ghost and so on, and you start walking like a, like a son of hell, like in the hell or something, your walking is uh, fleshly and so on, there are sin 
which are unto death. You might, God can take you away before your time or you get sick or whatever can happen. So don't blaspheme Holy, Holy Ghost anyway. The unpardonable sin doesn't uh, involve adultery, murder or suicide. It's not ascribing to Satan the healing and miracles of charismatic evangelists and it's not, not the final rejec rejection of Christ. The unpardonable sin was committed when the scribe said that Jesus had an unclean spirit. The paragraph marks reveal the context. The scribe said that Jesus had Beelzebub. That was the unpardonable sin. The scribe said that Jesus had Beelzebub. That was the unpardonable sin. So yes, and uh, there is uh, thirdly this uh, millennial, millennial thing that, uh, of course, in the millennium, uh, coming millennium where Jesus Christ will be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, my best quest that if you go there and uh, you go blaspheme Lord Jesus Christ or Holy Spirit there, I think uh, you will be thrown to the lake of fire which is in Edom. So it's not uh, better not to do it. Better not to do it. Uh, my best advice about this matter is don't ever blaspheme the Holy Ghost. He is not to be blasphemed. You might get trouble in the flesh. And why you, why you should take, uh, uh, put more sin on your shoulder than you already have. Don't blaspheme uh, Lord Jesus Christ. Don't blaspheme God. Don't blaspheme uh, Holy Ghost. Which th these three are one. <coughs> Why, why would you anyway do that? So the person who is in Christ, who is in Jesus Christ, why he would even do, do such thing? It's uh, pretty difficult to even believe that uh, anyone who is in Christ would even blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Why? Why? So uh, it has nothing to do with the, uh, losing salvation or something like this during this time. But uh, uh, anyway, if you are in Christ, you are saved and so on. You can uh, give testimony and preach about Lord Jesus Christ and what the Holy, Holy Ghost has done and, and uh, bless God and so on. There are many good things you can use your tongue and talk about the matters of Bible. Why curse them? Why be like a uh, wife of Job, curse God and die? Something like this. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, anyway, uh, uh, yes, there was no blood atonement in the Old Testament for blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, but sure there is in the New Testament. There is a, a blood atonement for all sins. Let's have a look some uh, next verses. Take uh, Acts chapter 13, verse 38 to 39. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe, no exceptions, are justified from all things, no exceptions, from which ye couldn't be justified by the law of Moses. And then 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. No exceptions. Amen.